Imagine that you're in a car and the only way that you can see out of the car is through the side window. The car is very smooth so you'll not be able to feel the movement of the car and you won't be able to hear the car or the road vibrations. So that top part of the screen is the side view window and that's what you're going to be able to see. So let's assume that the car's motion is always the same and it doesn't change. Now can you tell if the car is moving at this point? Is it moving fast or slow or forward or backwards? Is it stopped? How do you know? Well, what about now? Are you able to tell if the car is moving now? Is it moving fast, slow, forwards, backwards? Is it stopped now? Well, how about now? What changed? Is the car moving fast, slow, forwards, backwards? Is it stopped? How do you usually tell if something is in motion? Let's try this. How about now? Is the car moving? Fast, slow, forwards, backwards? Is it stopped? How can you tell now? Well, the answer to if the car is moving or not is that it depends on your frame of reference. So think about how you would usually be able to describe motion, how do you know if something is moving, and how would you describe its motion? Let's look at a couple more examples that really show that motion isn't always as simple as it seems. So watch this bird. And notice that, well, the body's moving, but it seems like the head isn't always moving. So is the bird moving? Now take a look at this helicopter. Now it's flying, it's obviously gaining altitude, but it looks like the rotors aren't moving. How is that even possible? Well, I will tell you that the rotors are moving and this has something to do with how the video is taken, which we'll talk more about later. But again, motion isn't as easy as it seems. All right, so to determine if something is moving, we have to establish the system that it is a part of. And a system is basically all the parts that we consider when looking at a situation. So for example, if I were to throw a ball up into the air, is the system just the ball or does the system also include me? Does the system include the earth? Does it include the sun? These are all things that we have to establish in order to figure out uh, what the system is so that we can determine if something is in motion. Now the frame of reference provides the boundaries. Think of a picture frame and everything within this picture frame would be your system. So it's your point of view uh, of the system. And this gives us reference points that we can use to compare position against. So for example, if I throw a ball up in the air, I become a reference point for the ball and if you're observing you're going to see that the ball is changing its distance from me which is going to tell you that the ball is moving. Now this clip from the Mythbusters is a great example of how changing your frame of reference can change your perception of an object's motion. Let's check it out. Can an object shot backwards while traveling forwards ever drop straight to the ground? It's a fascinating thought, but trying to prove it is bringing our physics team unraveled. Tori, Carrie, and Grant are struggling to prove the supposedly common sense myth that an object drops straight to the ground when its forward and backward momentum are exactly the same. With the forward and backward momentum matched as close as they're going to get it, the pressure's on Grant for a perfect release. I don't know about you guys, but that looked pretty good to me. Let's check the high speed. It really looked good to the naked eye, but the judge in this case is the high speed. Oh my God, it's like a, it's like a cartoon. <laughs> it's just in the air, it stops and it just falls. Look at that. Fantastic. I mean, look, it, it doesn't move at all. It's going straight down. Dude. Woo! We did it! After three days of suffering, that single shot brings the myth to an end. I can't be happier. We actually got the speed of the car to match the speed of the soccer ball, and we got a Quick pause. I just wanted to point out that these are three different reference frames, and you should try rewinding this video to watch each frame separately to see just how different the motion of the ball looks when viewing it through a different frame. All right, here we go. Big straight down drop. Ladies and gentlemen, the laws of physics are still hard at work. 
Another one of my favorite examples is actually a video that Mr. Jones, Mr. Dan, and myself made up at Fallon Middle School to demonstrate inertia. This video is a really good demonstration of relative motion as well, so let's check it out. So notice that Mr. Din throws the ball up from the back of the truck, and now we're going to see it in slow-mo. And this kind of answers that age-old question, what happens when you throw something up in a car? Is it going to come back down? And we'll talk more about this later. Now, watch when we focus on just the ball. Notice that the ball has an arced trajectory. It looks like it's flying to the left. Now let's watch it again, but let's focus on Mr. Din and the ball. So we're going to change our system around a little bit. And notice now that it looks like the ball is just going straight up and down if we try to ignore the background a little bit. So a really good example of how changing the system can actually change the perceived motion. When we looked at just the ball's path, we saw that the ball looked like it was traveling uh, to the side, but when we looked at the ball and the thrower, it looked like the ball was just going straight up and down. So hopefully those examples helped you to realize that motion is relative. It really depends on the system and the frame of reference and of course your reference points. So motion is a change in position relative to a reference, a reference point. And when we say relative to, we mean we're comparing it to something. So, you know, if I were to say, as you're sitting in your chair right now, are you moving relative to your chair? And the answer would be no. Are you moving relative to the sun? The answer would be yes, because, well, the earth is flying around the sun at some crazy speed. So relative to the sun, you are in fact moving. So it really depends on that frame of reference, on your reference points, uh, to determine if something is in motion. So let's try the car example again, now that we know what we're looking for. So we don't have any reference points here looking out the window, so how can we tell if the car is moving or not? Now we have a reference point. We have dump trucks passing by, and the dump trucks appear to be moving um, towards the back of the car, so we could say that, oh well, we're maybe moving forward. Now the dump trucks are passing even faster, so we might think that we're moving forward faster. But do we really know? What we really need is another reference point, like say this building here. And that building being stationary tells us that the car is not moving, but the dump trucks are moving. That's it for relative motion for now. It is a little tricky, so if you are still having some confusion, please make sure to ask for help. Thanks for watching.